the first LACNOC presentation. This is a guest presentation from the anti-abuse working group. The presentation will be made by Rich Compton, who is a security engineer in Chartered Communications. I think he is going to participate through soon. Hola, Rich. Te damos la palabra. Hola. Hola, buenas tardes. Voy a compartir mi pantalla ahora. Voy a pedirles que me permitan. So, if it's possible, if I could uh, share my slides. Uh, okay, all right, working now, thank you. Okay, all right, great. Okay, uh, my name is Rich Compton. Uh, I am a network engineer for Charter Communications. And um, I am I'm also the um uh the special interest group chair for mog's um ddos uh special interest group so um i have a presentation here um we're going to discuss specifically volumetric ddos attacks so there are really three types of ddos attacks you have the application layer attacks where um, the attacker is overwhelming an application, um, like doing a flood of HTTP GET traffic. Um, also, there are state exhaustion attacks where the attacker is overwhelming a device that is keeping state. Uh, SYN flood is, is a common um, instance of that. Um, and then there are also volumetric attacks, and that's specifically what I'm talked about. And that's where the attacker is overwhelming the network. So an example of this is an attacker generating, say, 100 gigabits of UDP uh, flood of traffic. And so the, the arrows on the side here are showing that the application layer attacks uh, are generating uh, less network traffic and then going towards more volume to, towards the bottom of the volumetric. And the expertise needed is very easy to launch volumetric, um, and then it's more difficult for the state and uh, more difficult even more for the application layer. Um, so there are two types of, of, of volumetric DDoS attacks. There is uh, attacks that are generated directly to the victim um, where there is a flood coming from a botnet. Um, and then the other type of attack that I'm going to focus on is attack traffic that is sent from a spoofed source IP to the victim. Um, a very common one of uh, type of this attack is a NTP monless flood. So what is a DDoS amplification? Um, this is where the attacker is spoofing the source IP of the victim, sending the amplification request packet to numerous destinations on the internet which have open services which can amplify the attack traffic um, and then these open services they send a greater response than that request down to the victim so the most common types of udp amplification attacks uh, that we see um, first of all the most common is is dns um, this is where the attacker is normally doing a TXT text query um, and any or in any query. Um, and this is on UDP port 53. NTP is the second most common one. There is a, a monless command which will print out, it will return the last six, uh, or I think it's the last 200 
uh, IPs that have connect to that NT NTP server um, with each packet having six uh, IP addresses in it. And then you can also do a version query. And a lot of the servers on the internet have shut down monoliths. That's not as common, but there are millions of devices that are vulnerable to this version amplification. Um, there is WS discovery um, on UDP port 3702, uh, LDAP on port 389, and Apple Remote Desktop or Apple Remote Management, I think is um, something that's also called ARM. Um, and that is on UDP port 3283. Uh, we also see a lot of MDNS, uh, multicast DNS, and this should be only be on a local network, but um, there are a lot of vulnerable devices that will respond to um, not multicast traffic, which it should only respond to multicast, but also responds to unicast traffic. And Ubiquity on UDP port 10,001 is another one we see quite a bit. And then uh, Plex, uh, Plex media servers that people run in their homes on UDP port 32414, um, that is very common. There's also TCP amplification, and we have seen a big increase in TCP amplification attacks in the past, past three years or so. Um, so there is SYN ACK amplification, uh, push amplifiers. Uh, so in, in this, the, the data is sent before the, the three-way handshake finishes, FTP banners, have a lot of, um, there are a lot of these FTP banners that will uh, amplify traffic um, and then also reset amplification. And so in these attacks, um, say if, if an attacker is spoofing a SYN, the server should set, send back a SYN ACK to the victim. Um, but if there is not an accent, then some of the, the issue is that some of these servers instead of just sending back like two, three uh, Synax, they will send back maybe 50 or 100 Synax. And the same thing with, with resets, and that's where this amplification factor comes in. So if you're interested in learning more about this, um, this amplification vector was uh, uh, discovered by a professor at uh, a German university uh, his name is Christian Rousseau, and his paper is there. It's called Hell of a Handshake. And so in that paper, he, he details um, how much, uh, how many devices are out there and what the amplification factor is of this. And unfortunately, the attackers are now uh, using this as, as a method of amplifying attack traffic. And... Then there is a new type of attack um, that we have seen within the past uh, year, year and a half, um, and this is TCP middle box amplification. Uh, so I have uh, heard it argued that it should, instead of TCP middle box, it should be called HTTP middle box amplification. Um, so in this attack, there is a, a middle box, which let me th see. Yes, I have, okay, I have this diagram. And so this is from the paper um, where uh, the researchers discovered this, this vulnerability. And so the attacker is doing the same thing of spoofing the source IP of the victim, sending the traffic to some server, but it's not the server that does the amplification. There is a middle box. And so this middle box is passively watching the traffic normally. And this could be a, a firewall. Um, this could be a, uh, an IDS or uh, something like that. I believe the Great Firewall of China is, um, is vulnerable to this. And so these are, are boxes that are looking for specific payload um, in, the, in the packet. 
And in this example here, and what we see if the, with a lot of the attacks, the, the attacker is putting in an HTTP get for some pornography website. And the middle box, it's then supposed to block that traffic. Um, and But what really the middle box should be doing is looking for an initial three-way handshake. But these middle boxes, they are trying to be more efficient. So they are just doing the regex on the packet. They are just looking at, at the payload of the packet. And so a lot of times the attackers are just sending a TCP SYN with this payload, with this HTTP get of this pornography website. The middle box then responds back with a message that says, this web page is blocked. You are not allowed to go to this page. And it's usually a very big. So there's that, that's where this amplification factor comes in. And instead of returning to the attacker, since the attacker is spoofing their source IP, the the attack uh, traffic is going is going down to the victim. So a way that the middle boxes could fix this is by looking for initial three-way handshake. Um, and so this started being uh, weaponized uh, recently. And there's the link to to the paper. Um, that details what devices are out there and what the amplification factor is. So why are these attacks such a big problem? Um, so these customers that have um, an open amplifier, an open UDP service or something like that, they are going to have slow internet speeds. Um, they are probably calling up customer service, complaining that their internet is slow and that, you know, you are a, a bad ISP or giving me slow service. They, um, probably the ISPs are trying to fix the issue by sending a, a, a um, technician out to the person's home. Uh, so this is also, these attacks are also taking up upstream bandwidth. Um, and usually that upstream bandwidth is less than, than the downstream. That is very common in cable networks and DSL, things like that. So, you know, that, that causes issues and it can affect other customers that are on that same upstream. And then also there are other ISPs on the internet that this, this amplified traffic is, is going to. And so those ISPs are going to generate complaints to your abuse group. And then also um, the victim, the victim is, is receiving all this traffic. And so the victim is taken, taken down. And then um, also on that same network as the victim, the network infrastructure can be affected and other customers on that network are, can be affected as well. So I've heard this question, can't we just get people to fix all of their devices? And unfortunately, that is a very difficult task. Um, so number one, you can never get everyone to fix every single device that they have out there. Um, you will usually get like maybe 60, 70% if you contact them. Some people will do something about it and then another portion will just never do anything about it. And another issue is that even if we fix 99% of these open servers on the internet, it's still, that 1% is still enough to generate terabit level DDoS attacks. So there was a presentation that was given by Damien Mencher of Google um, at Nanog and here, this is the link to his presentation. And he was, you know, making this argument that trying to focus on addressing all of the vulnerable servers is a fool's errand. It's just something that we can never do. So, and then he's also making the point there that there are new vulnerable devices that are continuously added to, to the network every day. But something that we can do 
is look for the amplified, um, the amplification request. And this traffic is spoofed. Um, and that means that the attacker has been able to send packets with the source IP that is not real, their true source IP. They pick, they, they're using the source IP of the victim. Um, so here are some unique char traffic characteristics of this DDoS amplification tra uh, traffic that I have seen. So if you want to look for this traffic on your network, probably the easiest way to, to look for it is to look for traffic with a source port 80 or 443, and then the destination is one of these open amplifier ports. Um, so say look for source port 80 or 443 and then destination port 53. So that is invalid traffic. The source port should be above uh, 1024. So if it's 80 or 443, that is definitely uh, bad traffic. So that's an easy way to identify it. Um, really, if you, if you look for that, there should be no false positives because this is invalid traffic. Um, this is a PCAP filter here that you can put into Wireshark or TCP dump. Um, you could also create a logging access list to look for, for this traffic. And so, you know, it, it shows here the source port of 80 or 443, and then the destination port of these numerous protocols um, that are below uh, 1023, which are used for amplification. So uh, there is an organization called Shadow Server. Um, it is a, a nonprofit organization that is scanning the internet, looking for these vulnerable servers. And they will provide a free daily report to anyone uh, that is operating an ISP or hosting network. It's basically if you are, are uh, controlling an autonomous system, then you can receive this report for free. Uh, they used to send emails. I believe now that you can only get the report via their API. Uh, they have a GitHub page where you can uh, download some code to pull down the, the data from their API. Uh, I also have some code on my GitHub page. Um, and now they list the amplification factor. So you could potentially pull this down and then look for the hosts that have the worst amplification factor and then try to address those. They also have a, a dashboard at this link, uh, dashboard.shadowserver.org, where you can get a nice graphical view of uh, where the worst offenders are for the various types of uh, vulnerable services. Uh, there is another project that I have been involved with, uh, with Cable Labs, um, which is an organization that develops the standards for the uh, cable industry. And they have a client that will pull down the list of attacking IP addresses from DDoS mitigation solutions like Arbor's Sightline. And then that information is uploaded to a centralized database. And then abuse groups can pull down what source IPs on their network that were generating the attack traffic. And so Charter's uh, abuse group pulls this down daily and then uses that to contact customers to try to address um, customers that are infected with bot software or you know, have been generating lots of attack traffic. And so there was a presentation in MOG about this and that, that link right there provides the, the link to the presentation. Uh, you have to be a MOG member in order to download that. Uh, so a, another aspect of the DDoS amplification traffic is that normally, <clears throat> normally there is 
one source IP, and that is the spoofed source IP, the victim, that is sending traffic into your network. Um, and if you look at this example here, it has all the same source port and then multiple destination IPs on our network. And then it's all the same destination port. So this is a very clear way to identify that this is spoofed traffic coming into our network. So I have developed an open source solution. Um, I call it Tattletail. It is on my GitHub page, there, there's the link, and it uses the Elk stack, which is Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, and Filebeat. And so it collects NetFlow and then looks specifically for this DDoS traffic. And I use the DDoS info sharing information and the shadow server information to filter out just that NetFlow. And then I throw all, all, anything that doesn't look like amplification traffic away. So I'm only storing the, what looks like DDoS amplification into the database. Uh, and then it all, so this, since this is NetFlow, it has the interface, um, input interface information. And that input information um, gets translated to an ASN, to autonomous system number. And so then I can identify who the peer is that is sending me the spoof traffic. Um, or else uh, it also does a removal of false positive, uh, known good scanners, uh, shadow server, Arbor, Cybergreen, they all do scanning. And so that, that traffic is removed as false positives. So the architecture of the tool is I use FileBeat to ingest the NetFlow. It then goes to Logstash which is doing the filtering to only look for the amplification request traffic. Um, that the, the log stash filters are updated daily using some Python scripts to retrieve the shadow server, the DDoS uh, information, sharing information, uh, information. And then after it passes through log stash, the data is submitted into the Elastic database. And then Kibana is used as a web front end to retrieve the information. And so let me see, I think I can share this. Yeah, hopefully it's, it's live here. Yep. Okay. So here we have, um, this column right here, NetFlow Open UDP, tells us if Shadow Server has identified this particular uh, destination as having an open amplifier. And so this customer does have an open DNS server. And so this looks like uh, amplification request traffic here. And then this, this column here says if uh, the DDoS info sharing project has identified this destination IP as an attacker. And so say in this column, it has this shadow server says that it is an open DNS and the DIS says it, it's, it's, it is an abuser. So this looks like true amplification traffic here. Um, and then also we have the input interface information, which has been translated to AS and then to, to a name as well. So here I can see who, which peers or transit providers are sending me the spoof traffic. And I have another, let's see, table here. Here we go. And so. We can make this a little larger. I'll do top five.
And so here I can see the top five peers that are sending me this spoof traffic. And so GTT, it looks like they are the worst offender. They are sending, sending me too much spoof traffic. So I've been trying to talk to them about that. Okay. And so this, this tool is open source. And if anybody is interested in using it, all you need to do is just export the NetFlow uh, from your routers, from your peering routers, and then um, use this tool. So I have been looking at the attack traffic and um, I see that a majority of the attack traffic is, is specific packet sizes. And so I, I know we're kind of short on time here, so I'm just gonna kind of go through pretty quickly. Uh, the, the NTP, almost all that traffic is 36 bytes. So it could be possible to, to filter out um, just this amplification request traffic. And here, um, I'm showing if it's possible to completely filter it or, um, or if there's valid traffic. And so this one don't filter, but this WSD, it looks like it's almost the, almost all of these 31 bytes. So it could be filtered out. The Apple remote desktop is almost all 32 or 33 bytes. You could maybe rate limit that traffic. LDAP um, is very rarely used. Uh, MDNS, we did, it really didn't see any false positives here. So I think it's good to just completely block this traffic. Uh, Ubiquity, it's almost all 32 bytes. Plex, it's this 29 bytes. It's potentially you could filter out packets for 32, 414. Uh, and for 29 bytes at the, at the peering edge. SNMP, there's some, a lot of false positives. There are some false positives here. So I recommend not filtering that out. Port mapper, um, you may want to rate limit that. Port mapper on UDP is very rarely used. So I don't think there's too much of a concern there. Uh, the TCP middle box, I don't think that you can rate limit or filter this. Because, you know, it's TCP port 80. But almost all of it is, is SIN packets that have a large size. And that is something that is, that is very, very rare. So um, it may, you probably don't want to filter that out, but it's maybe a good way to identify when these attacks are going on. So something that you can do about this is source address validation. This is BCP38. 84, there, there are solutions like unicast reverse, reverse path forwarding and access lists. Um, there's also source verify commands that allow you to passively look at the uh, DHCP and filter on, on that if the DHCP offer um, IP does not match what the, what the customer is sending. Um, and then you should also test to make sure that you cannot send spoof traffic from your network. And there is this project from Kadia, is the spoofer project, where there is a client that will generate spoofed traffic and then uh, generate a report on that. So something we've been doing in MOG is working on this DDoS traceback. So we try to identify where the spoof traffic is, is coming from and then get the ISP or the hosting company to, to shut down the attack traffic. And so NetFlow is very helpful. You can use Tattletail. Um, there are other NetFlow collection solutions that, that can be used or logging access lists. Um, and so this project has allowed us to reduce the amount of DDoS traffic um, for, from amplifications globally. So this attack traffic has been growing for the past 20 years, continuously increasing. And then in uh, 2000, um, 2021, the attack traffic started to, to go down here. And that's the blue line here. 
And so this is a uh, report here. This is a graph from uh, NetScout Arbor showing that this attack traffic is is going down, which is which is good. So if anyone is a member of, of MOG and would like to join us and help us with this project, please contact me and, and let me know. Um, so there are some filters that can be applied at your edge to, to drop this attack traffic. These ports right here can be dropped and then um, this traffic can be rate limited. And uh, what we do is we rate limit this to 1% of the interface bandwidth. So some next steps, uh, we need to get more ISPs and internet exchanges to look for the spoof traffic. And we need to encourage others to, to clean up their networks and not allow this spoof traffic. Um, there's also some things that we are looking at, like using flow spec to block this, this traffic. Um, and then also maybe using uh, DPI on certain packets to look for the amplification request traffic. And that's the end of my presentation. Are there any questions? Por el momento no tenemos preguntas. No questions. Okay. All right. Thank thank you very much.